What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. In the previous episode, we had lost a friend, we had said our last words, and now we're taking a look at the optical chip that What's-Her-Name had sent over. Alice, that Alice had sent to us with all the information on finding the Dragon Slayer. So let's see what there is to offer. The cool blue tones, okay, let's go ahead and read the contents. We have no new unread messages. Oop, I don't want to walk away, I want to get involved. One of my friends is now dead. We'll claim payment for the Aztechnology DNA donor list. We don't have anything else to post, and I think that's probably going to be the end of our data dealing days anyways. You slot the optical chip into the computer's waiting chip jack. On the screen, Alice's office blossoms into view. A half second later, a real-time simulation of Alice appears, seated behind her mahogany desk. Something about it reminds you of a figure from a wax museum. Lifelike, but dead inside. It's kind of like the EverQuest 2 models. It greets you with a facsimile of Alice's joyless smile. Customer name, Threeto. Its voice is hollow and synthetic, an automaton masquerading as a living woman, one who you've never even met in the flesh. Account number, 1012579. Greetings, valued customer. I am an offline simulcrum of the Alice persona. I have been included on this chip to answer any questions that you might have about your information purchase. Nifty piece of tech. Not now, Blitz. If you are ready to proceed, I will present Alice's findings. You may interrupt this presentation at any point by saying, Alice, I have a question. We're ready. Let's get this show on the road. Very well. Commencing presentation. The simulcrum goes rigid for a moment, then seems to relax. When it speaks, it sounds more natural, as though the real Alice is speaking through it. All right, Threeto, I've got good news for you, and I've got bad news. Let's start with the good. I found Val Claire, and he's alive. Thank God. The trail to your missing doctor was a long and slippery one. The fee that you paid me barely covered my costs for the job. I sent a team into the socks on a fact-finding mission. I bribed government officials. I greased the palms of wage slaves at megacorps all across Europe. Each step I took eliminated possibilities and drew me a little bit closer. Finally, I found the place where Valclair is being held. The simulacrum makes a sweeping gesture with its right hand and an image of switchblades or an image switchblades onto the screen, a grainy overhead photograph annotated with map coordinates. You recognize it immediately. This is where you'll find him. He's being held captive at a remote estate called the Harfeld Manor. You've got to be kidding me. He was there the whole time? Glory says nothing. She just studies the photograph and nods. All right, nobody tell me. I get it. This is something else that I missed. If this was the good news, I can't wait to hear the bad news. The simulacrum pauses and a brief tremor washes over its body. Its eyes flutter and you can hear the sound of your computer working to process more of the chip's data. Iger turns to address the team. If Valclair's at Harfeld, we've got problems. The last time we broke into that place, they took Monica out. It was a miracle that any of you got out alive. Yeah, but now we know what's down there. This time we'll be prepared for it and we can handle this. Iger shakes her head. No, it'll be worse this time. The first time that we went in, we had the element of surprise on our side, but now they'll be expecting us. They're hunting us, remember? The security team is going to be waiting for us, Dietrich. That Aldrin bastard is going to be waiting for us, and even if we make it past them, we're going to have to deal with a dragon in the basement. What else can we do? Cut and run? The last time I checked, that wasn't an option either. Even if it were, I wouldn't take it. I'm not running from this. Not after what they did here tonight. None of us are, Glory, but Iger's right. We can't just go charging in again, not without some kind of edge. The simulacrum jerks back to life. It resumes speaking, blissfully unaware of the conversation that it's cutting off. And now, Threeto, on to the bad news. You know where Valclair is, but rescuing him will not be possible. Alice, I have a question. He continues about waiting for a response. Why the hell not? In the course of my investigation, I encountered something terrifying in the Matrix. It was fast, cunning, and very definitely intelligent. I'm convinced that I only escaped because it let me go. It could have killed me in a heartbeat if it wanted to. The thing that I met is protecting Harfeld Manor, and it's going after anyone who gets too close to what's happening here. Alice, what did you see in there? What is going after these people? By way of explanation, I would like you to read the following document. The simulacrum makes another sweeping gesture and the menu slides back onto the screen. This time, it's filled with text. What you're looking at is an archive forum discussion from the early days of the Shadowland BBS. Blitz stares at the text on screen. She, uh... It isn't kidding, Chief. This discussion is dated back to 2036. That's ancient history in the decking community. It probably isn't even correct to call these guys deckers. Hackers would be a more appropriate term. When you're finished leading over it, say, Alice, I'm done, and we can continue. Read the archive discussion. As you lean in to read, the text slowly begins to scroll up from the bottom of the screen. You all hear about the SK team that got crisped a few hours ago? A whole lab's worth of researchers all burned and broken beyond recognition. Ugly stuff. That's from Clockwork. At this point, who hasn't? That's from Big Pharma. 
Power Spike got them right through their data jacks like a bolt of lightning to the brain. A one in a million accident is what they're saying. And you believe that? Got a more plausible explanation? Yeah, actually it was a cleanup operation. Well, color me intrigued, what were they cleaning up? A secret project that Loftweir didn't want anything to do with. You might have heard rumors about it. The project name was Apex. And you lost me. Apex? Clockwork? Seriously? That old line of Drek? I'm telling you jokers, Apex is real. At least it was until the Whizworm pulled the plug. Come on, Clockwork. We're still decades away from seeing a fully functional AI. You know that. Those Apex stories have been floating around and they're just some conspiracy nuts wet dream. Fine, keep your heads in the sand. Some of us know the truth when we read it. Alright, Clock, I'll humor you, but riddle me this. If Loftweir had an armed and operational AI in his claws, why kill it? You remember what happened to most of Echo Mirage? The crash virus killed them, fried their brains, but I don't see what that has to do with anything. With the commercial release of the CDT-1000, some security firms are working on counter-intrusion software that could do the same thing. Black Ice, you can look it up if you don't deserve me, or if you don't believe me. Whoa, scary stuff, man. Well, the goal of the Apex project was even scarier. Ice waits for you to come to it. Apex wouldn't be bound by those restrictions. It would go out hunting and hit its targets where they least expected it. That's why they called it Apex. It was designed to be the Apex Predator of the digital world. And so, rather than using it to his advantage, Lofweir decided to kill it in the cradle? The Whizworm's no fool. Some things are too dangerous to play around with. How would you put that genie back in the bottle if it ever slipped out of your control? The answer, you couldn't. And then it would take over the world! Alright, this forum has officially gone off the rails. I'm closing it down for the good of mankind. The slow scroll of text comes to a stop. Alice, I'm done. The Simulcrum jerks back to life, then settles into a neutral pose. There's no official records in the Seder Krupp database to support the existence of the Apex project, but the thing that I encountered was Apex. Of that I'm certain. Just as I am certain that Apex was responsible for the deaths of Monica Schaefer, Green Winters, Clockwork, Peregrine, and a score of other Deckers over the last 16 years. Blitz raises his hand. Hold up, uh, Alice, I have a question. I thought they said that Loftweir killed Apex. They speculated as much. Yes, they were wrong on that count. I do believe that Sator Krupp was developing Apex as a tool for Matrix Warfare. I'm also convinced that the IT personnel who were convinced were the Apex development team, but I don't know that Loftweir was responsible for their deaths. Apex killed them. That would be my guess, yes. In the turmoil surrounding Loftweir's buyout of Sator Krupp, this number of subjects went missing. I believe that Apex was appropriated by a number of Firewings organization at this point. It was then unleashed on its own development team to silence them. Since then, it has provided information control for Firewing. A pet AI would explain how Firewing has managed to maintain her conspiracy and avoid detection over the past two decades. Anytime anyone gets close, the AI takes them out and scrubs the record clean. So there's your bad news, Threeto. Valclair is being held at Harfeld Manor, but knowing that does you no good because you can't approach the place. I doubt that you could open the door without Apex frying you. We did last time. They were trying to protect their secret, like Aldrin said. If we hadn't gone into the basement, they'd have let us go. Apex didn't react to us until Monica attempted to force the door to the basement. And now that the cat's out of the bag, they have no reason to pull out the big guns on sight. Or no reason not to pull out the big guns. Dietrich Grimmage says, You're right, we can't go back while Apex is in place. The room falls into silence, and finally, Iger turns to you. Well, what's the play, Three Joe? We can't turn back now. If Apex is standing in between us and Valclair, then we need to find a way to kill Apex. Fucking A, boss. I'm in. Did you hear that, Alice? Do you have any suggestions? The Simulcrum hitches to life again. This power stretches. Finally, it comes back to life. The AI does have a kill switch, but Alice deemed any additional contact with Apex to be an unjustifiable risk. Attempting to reach the kill switch would be inadvisable. If Alice was scared of this thing, well, we can say that we can spare us the warnings. Save me the warnings. I'm going to kill this thing. I owe Monica that much. You and me both. Alice, tell us about Apex's kill switch. The Simulcrum stares at you with dead eyes. Thanks to any close encounter with the AI, I was able to run a trace on it. Through this trace, I discovered the physical address of a backdoor access point for Apex's programming, an old Sator Krupp research lab, long since abandoned and fallen into disrepair. The, the facility is now hotly contested gang territory. I have also determined that a kill switch for the AI exists somewhere in the basement of this facility. I will provide you with a physical, ad physical address. I don't like the smell of this, Chief. It said that Apex let Alice escape. He turns to address the simulcrum on screen. Alice, why would a Matrix Warfare AI allow you to run a trace on it? It stares straight ahead. Its eyes are dead. I'm afraid the answer to that question falls outside the scope of my written parameters. The simulcrum stutters one final time, then looks up at you with an apologetic smile. You have now reached the end of this presentation. I have been 
Encode it with a final message from Alice to Three Toe. Playback commencing. The simulcrum's eyes go wide and the light floods back into it. It stares directly at you. Three Toe, if you didn't listen to me before, listen to me now. Drop this. Stop going after Valclair. Get out of Berlin and stay out of the Matrix. I'm telling you this for your own good. That's all that I have to say. I'm following my own advice and I'm out. Don't try to contact me again. The simulcrum reverts back to its idle state, slumping like a puppet with its wings struck or with its strings cut. Its eyes glaze over and its face goes slack, then the screen cuts to black. So the dragon has a killer AI in charge of security. I can't say that I'm surprised, but then nothing surprises me anymore. We know what killed Monica, and we have a name for it, and we know how to kill it. That's good enough for me. We know what we have to do. We can either stand around talking about it or we can do it. Alright, so agreed. We shut down Apex, we re-enter the estate, and we rescue Valclair. He's the key to the whole thing. Sounds like a plan, boss. I still say that this is all crazy talk, Chief. Taking on an AI isn't a bad idea, it's suicide, so my vote is to cut and run. Blitz surveys the rest of the group, sees the determined in their faces, and finally sighs. But if you're really doing this, you want the best decker you can find along for the ride, and I guess that nominates me. Woo. Alice said that the kill switch is located in some old SK facility. Assuming that the site was shut down sometimes after the Apex project disappeared, it would have stood empty for years, perhaps even decades. She also said that the building was in gang territory now. I wonder if it'll be anything like Das Castle House was. God, I hope not. There's only one way to find out. Let's get prepped. This AI isn't going to kill itself. Blitz glances at you. The worry is painted all over his face. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but you'd better bring me along. You try going up against this thing without a Nova Hot Decker at your side, you're probably going to regret it. Iger begins her weapons check. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Whatever's there, we'll deal with it. First, let's find our way into a basement. She peers through the scope of her sniper rifle, and then we'll kill the AI that killed Monica. Damn right. The team breaks in to begin gearing up. As, as, the slides, oh, as she slides a shell into her shotgun, Iger catches your eye. You did good out there defending the Kreutzbazar. You've had our backs the entire way and made good decisions. In this job, we work together, we die alone. Iger scowls and stares at the floor and nods. True, you're right again. Anyways, we should get back to it. We've got an AI to take out after all. She pauses for a moment, frowning. Three-tail, do me a favor and keep your eyes on this one. We're walking into the unknown here and it makes me a little uneasy. Don't worry, Iger. I've got your back. She smiles and claps you on the shoulder. I know you do and I've got yours. You've more than earned it. Stop it, you're making my mascara run. She smirks as she slides back the shotgun into its sheath on her back. I have that effect on people sometimes. Come on, you two. We've got a job to do. Damn straight we do. Dante, you want to come along? I would bring Dante. I love Dante. Dante is the greatest thing to ever happen to me in this game. Dante lifts his head and looks up at you mournfully. The feral aggression has gone from his eyes. He's changed and you can see it, but it's still Dante. So, 3 toe Dante was pretty helpful out there, but I am concerned about his fire breathing. Yeah, it's a pretty cool trick, don't you think? It's handy. It's not hard to argue, but he's not a normal dog, not by a long shot. Is he possessed? I assume you've checked his aura and discovered that he's part hellhound. Monica trained him for months to be combat ready. We had a hellhound in the house and Monica didn't say anything for months? 3 toe has him under control. Dante performed well in the field, followed commands flawlessly. I have no concerns. He'll stay with me. Where he runs, I run. I said that backwards, but that's that. I made it sound like he's calling the shots, and I am that kind of person that does let my pet call the shots, so you do what you gotta do. Let's talk to everybody and see if we can't get the ho -oh molly on this entire situation. At the sound of your approach, Blitz stubs out his cigarette. He gives you a curt nod. Three toe, I'd offer you a smoke, but that was my last one. How'd the whole Emily situation work out? Anything new? Yeah, well, sort of. It's mostly speculation, truth be told. Well, what's the deal? Is she working with the Azzies or not? No, I don't think so, but I do have a new lead. After our talk, I went wading into all of the Technology Matrix hubs that I could find. Nothing too deep. Don't worry, I didn't want to set off any alarm bells, but I had a hunch that if I poked around long enough, I'd find something that might lead me to Emily. And sure enough, I did. A message from the genuine article herself. Wow, to be honest, I didn't think you'd find anything. He grins, oh ye of little faith. Word of the wise, Chief. When Blitz is on the job, you should always expect results. Blitz's smile dies away and he turns down to the floor. Well, I can tell you what her note said if you want. He presses forward without waiting for a response. It said, and I quote, Lay off, Blitz. I told you to leave me alone. You've shown admirable self-control over the last year. Please don't give up on it now. I'll be back when I can, if I can. Up until then, keep away from me for both of our sakes. 
So I found her, and she wants nothing to do with me again. No explanations, no apologies, just a verbal pat on the head. I've shown admirable self-control. Really, she makes it sound like I'm a toddler or something. So did you lay off like the message said? Hell no, I wasn't going to stand for that. Where did she get off stealing from me and then acting like it was my fault? I tried to trace the message like any good decker would. And did you succeed? Nah, she's good, 3 tail better than I thought she was. And I couldn't trace the damn thing. I could keep digging, though. I mean, if she noticed me doing it before, I must have been close. Now, before you say anything, I was more discreet this time. I can be subtle if I have to. Nobody noticed what I was doing, and I did find another clue. I hesitate to ask. That's okay, I'll tell you anyways. I found a connection between Emily and Sater Krupp. Well, damn it. So, do you think she works for Sater Krupp, then? That she stole the encrypted data for you to give to them? Well, maybe. I don't know, it's confusing. I was also able to track down some message fragments connecting her to the Shockwellen writer. So maybe she was a Sater Krupp mole, and she got close to me so that she could, I don't know, profit from my decking expertise? Maybe when she told me not to steal that data, she was using reverse psychology. That's gotta be it. She must have wanted me to take it. He frowns and shakes his head, but then again, maybe she's running with the Shockwellen Rider and she's screwing both the Aziz and SK over. If that's the case, then maybe she was with me because she generally wanted to be. He pauses for a moment considering, then all at once he seems to perk up. His chest puffs out and he nods once decisively. In either case, I should make an effort to find her. I mean, she's been playing a dangerous game, whether she's been with SK or the Shockwell and Ryder. Maybe she's got herself in too deep and needs a hand. I mean, why else would she send me cryptic messages? Let's see here. It's up to you, Blitz. At the end of the day, you're going to do whatever you want to anyways. Yeah, he nods excitedly. If, caught in the dim- <laughs> if he caught the dismissive tone of your words, he doesn't show it. You're absolutely right. It is up to me. It is up to me to save the woman that I love. Oh, man. Blitz claps his hand, then rubs them together in excitement. Get set, Chief. You're about to witness an event. When my gung-ho personality and legendary skills come together, the whole world stops and takes notice. I'm sure that it does, Blitz. I can't wait to see how this plays out. You won't have to wait long. I know just the place to hit. That's some... That same ass technology data node that I stole the information from in the first place. I already know how I can get past the security, and my gut tells me that that's where I'll find Emily. Thanks for the encouragement, Chief. I know that this is the right thing to do, of course, but you've helped to quiet any lingering doubts that I might have had. He nods at you, an expression of supreme confidence on his face. And now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a damsel in distress to rescue. Yeah, it's not going to work out for him. I can tell you that much already. Let's talk to Dietrich and see if he's softened up yet. Yep. He's still not softened up. Anybody else ready to roll? With a little bit of the drama? Glory favors you with a weak smile, her expression cautious. You're suddenly aware of how very small she is. Hoy, Thrito. I've got to admit, I've been dreading this. So now that you know what I've done, and I am... Oh, and what I am, are you here to tell me off? I wouldn't blame you if you were. No, Glory, I'm not here to tell you off. Truth be told, I wanted to check in and see how you're doing. Not great. Struggling. About how you'd expect. You left off in a bad place last time. I've been thinking about your story, and I have a question for you. Yeah, what's that? We can ask about the Harrow, or we can ask about Harrow. And whether she wanted to kill him. We can ask if she's looking for closure. Or we can ask if she got out of the... Fireplace, but the cult is up and running. So shouldn't we do something about it? I'm gonna go for that. So you got out of the fireplace, but Harrow's cult is still up and running, right? Still full of kids who are being brainwashed and worse. Shouldn't we do something about that? Yeah, the caution evaporates from Glory's face as she continues considers your words. Yeah, you know, after we've gotten ourselves out of the situation we're in, I might be able to right some of the wrongs that I've committed under Harrow. Alright, so what would you suggest? Well, we could say that freeing the kids would be first priority. We can wipe out the cult, or we could put it on the back burner for a while. Freeing the kids should be the first priority. I'd round up some magical support, raid the fireplace, and clear Harrow's influence from their minds. Killing Harrow would be secondary. I'd hate giving Harrow the chance to escape, but I think you're right. Saving the kids is what it's important. She pauses, considering the choice, and the file... Or a file... God, my dyslexia is messing with me today, and a smile flits across her lips. This feels like the path to redemption. This feels right. Glad to hear that we're in agreement. Now, let's get back on task after we deal with more immediate problems. You can go with my blessing. She nods. Right, thanks, Rito, for everything. And then finally, let's chat it up with Iger. Iger eyes you warily. Her expression is guarded. You need something? No, not right now. Well, I guess we'll spend the remainder of the episode locking and loading, then. 
Let's go ahead and we've got nine karma to fiddle with. This game has been a little bit more tight-fisted about its karma distribution. And that's something that I think is okay. It's the first game you had a lot of karma and I think it got you to the point where you were overpowered by the end of the game. This one keeps it a little bit more tight-fisted to where things remain a little bit RNG laden whenever you're in combat. And I don't think it's going to get any better. Now we can't go up any further with Conjuring. And with the nine karma we have... I think we can either go with our old discourse of having a bit more shotgun power. So we could go four right there, we could go four right there, and then we have the one remaining after we did the support run. Let's do that because I think our charisma is about capped out right now. And following in the spirit of Jake, I want to have a few extra samurai skills. I want to be a Nova Hot Killer in the shadows. We'll go for, we can either go for quickness five now, which is what I think I'll do. And then maybe ranged combat 4 just to make sure that we can hit things. I don't think we can go any further. And in fact, I may try and stick with the possibility of just going ranged combat and not even messing with shotguns. Just making sure that we're able to hit things. So yeah, that's cool. I mean, we don't have anything else to put the points into anyways, so why not? Let's make our way out to the Talus Kramer and see if anything's on offer for us that's going to be better than what we had before. It probably also won't hurt us to kind of scan around for any information we can get. That attack, it was terrible, Threeto. So much death, she shakes her head. I haven't killed since I retired from running the shadows, not until today. But you're not here to listen to me complain. What can I get for you? Name it and I'll provide. I need some tech and I'm on a short schedule. Eh, what kinds of tech do you carry? Anything and everything. You need a new deck, some software, I'm your girl. Well, let's see what she's got. I don't know if it's anything that's going to help us, but... Just general gear and kit. Let's sell off some of the extra stuff that we have that hasn't really been that useful. And that'll work. We've got 20 grand, which is a lot of money by Shadowrun standards. Not enough to retire, but enough to get out of the shadows and drink yourself into a hole for a while. Let's go talk and we'll meet up with our dear friend over here at the coffee shop. See what Luca Dwyer's got for us. He's not even phased. He's good to go. The lady that was sitting on the couch has moved around. And Altug. The Turk is pale. His eyes sunken into his head are ringed by dark circles. We are closed today, FND. I would have locked the door, but the lock is broken. Now I must stand guard. You were attacked? He nods silently. During the attack on the Kreutzbazar, they broke through the door, heavily armed. Two of them, they broke through the door and they just started shooting. No questions, no robbery, just shooting. Kami, my my girl, my my little street rat, they... He holds his hands over his face and then collects himself. I reached under the counter. I keep a gun there, you see, and they saw. Both of them turned on me. Goldschmidt, the fat idiot Goldschmidt, flung himself my way. How he managed to move that great mass of a body so quickly is a mystery to me. He hung there, suspended in time as they shot him, dancing on their bullets as they ripped him apart. But he, he shielded me long enough, FND. I was able to get my gun and end those sons of whores. So he was your friend after all. That's the thing of it, FND. All that time, all that bickering between us. I was serious. I couldn't stand the man, but he... Apparently it was something different to him. None of us will be the same after this. Still, it's good for us, I think. Healthy. It reminds us that even though we've created our little island of stability in the Kreutzbazar... This is still the flux state. It's still Berlin, and the wolf is still always at the door. If we're to keep our home, we must be vigilant, and we need people like Monica and people like you to keep it safe. Sagolun, my friend. I don't know if I butchered that right there. Maybe my Turkish friends in the audience can help me out. Sagolun, my friend. Be healthy and be strong. Well, Kami's dead, which is disappointing because she was one of those characters that was really just kind of likable. It's disappointing to see somebody underage die and also somebody who was so likable. Who actually had the connections to make something of herself here in the flux state. Let's go ahead and go on down to the Talus Kramer whose sign has now been bent out of repair. She has work to do as always. Algernon is apparently communing with somebody. Salutations youngster, I believe that the Kreutzbassar is still standing thanks to you. It was a team effort. Monica would have done the same. I agree, and you have filled her shoes admirably. How may I serve you? And so we're going to get in here, and we're going to buy up some gear. We've got Acid Bolt 4, which is going to be better than the one we have right now. But let's go to Conjuring first, 
and see if we can't get ourselves situated with a bit of better gear. Hellstorm Barrier. So, Entrance takes AP damage. Heavy Cover. So, we're going to take that for sure. We can create our own medium ley line, and I think that's going to be useful than some of, more useful than some of the other stuff. Slow mo seems really nice too, and we'll also take haste four. So that puts us at sixty five hundred with regards to our expenditures. We'll confirm it. With regards to organizing everything that we have, I'm probably just going to get rid of mana ball at this point. It's not going to be mana efficient for us. I think I'll go back to basics and we'll just get everything out of the way. So first things first, we'll go with haste four. Next thing that I'd like to have, slow-mo for sure. I'm going to try and run kind of a really, really heavy support role on this run because I feel like debuffs are going to be important, especially considering the fact that the enemy has had an advantage on us since we've started. Go with mana charge two so that I can make my own ley line so that my targeting is a little bit better. We also want to have Hellfire, wherever it's at. Where is it? There we go. I don't know why it wasn't, it was appearing under the spells instead of under the, I don't know, that was strange. I will go with Shadow might be useful if we need to dig ourselves out of a really nasty situation. So I'm going to go with Shadow, and then I'm going to go with Heal. And I think that's going to be the optimal kit out for the next run. With regards to the med kits I'm going to be carrying, let's slot a few more of those in. I haven't used any Bomonos in a while. Confirm that, and then I want to look at clothing, but I'm going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for another somewhat dark episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow, and take care out there, everybody, and be careful when you're out in the shadows, chummers.